Thank you. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Reemployment Trade Adjustment Assistance Orientation for Wallo Electric Manufacturing, petition number 96076. I'm Carmine Burns from the Illinois Department of Commerce here with our subject matter expert core partners. And we are excited to share available government resources with you all today. We are having this orientation because the worker group from this company has been certified by the United States Department of Labor as eligible to apply for trade adjustment assistance benefits and services. Upon initial notice of the layoff, you may have received information on dislocated worker services. These services remain available to provide reemployment resources to minimize disruptions associated with job loss. However, this workshop will cover additional services to workers whose jobs were lost due to foreign trade or shifts in productions out of the United States. You were invited to this orientation because your name was on the affected employee list from the company as one of the individuals who were a part of the worker group certified to apply for trade benefits and services. While eligibility is determined on an individual basis, dislocated worker and trade benefits are at no cost to the participant. Next slide, please. Thank you. The agencies who will be presenting information today on trade benefits and services are myself from the Illinois Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity, the McHenry County Workforce Network. Laureen, if you, if you will, please take this moment to introduce yourself. Good morning. My name is Lori O'Brien. I'm with McHenry County Workforce Network, and we are here to help you with um, your, all of your trade benefits. Thank you, Lori. Uh, we also have the Illinois Department of Employment Security with us today. Adam, if you will, please take this moment to introduce yourself as well. Sure. Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Adam. I work with the trade unit here at IDES, and we're going to talk a little bit about the, the benefits now available to you. Thank you, Adam. Uh, today, we will cover program benefits and describe the next required steps to become trade eligible. If you have questions, please feel free to utilize the chat or write them down. Please do keep questions relevant to the entire group. We ask that you reach out to the respective presenter to have an offline conversation for feedback of specific individual questions that pertain to your individual situation. There will also be an opportunity for questions and answers at the end of the webinar. Next slide, please. When individuals are impacted by job loss, mass layoffs, global trade dynamics, or transitions in economic sectors, the Dislocated Worker Program provides immediate services to assist Illinois residents in re-entering the workforce. Staff in your local area will be able to assist you with re-employment services, such as unemployment benefits, filing assistance, career counseling, resume optimization, job search assistance, information about in-demand jobs in the area and grants funding to help you obtain training for a new career through education and professional certifications. These are just a few of the very comprehensive services that are available to you to assist you in your job transition. Services for dislocated workers are integrated and provided through a statewide network of local job centers. You may find the location closest to you by visiting illinoisworknet.com forward slash locations. We also have local representatives on today's call who can aid with next steps to access and services. In addition to these services, we will provide an overview of the Reemployment Trade Adjustment Assistance Program, which offers additional benefits and services. That is all for my presentation. I am now going to transition the floor to the next speaker, Lori O'Brien with the McCary County Workforce Network. And again, thank you for your time. And we ask that you all write down your questions and save them for the end of the meeting. Okay, again, I'm Lori O'Brien, a career planner with McHenry County Workforce Network and American Job Center. We are located at 500 Russell Court, Woodstock, Illinois. Our hours are Monday through Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Our website is mchenrycountyworkforce.com. 
You can stay up to date on job search advice, available job search resources, and current job openings by following us on social media, Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube. Other workforce career planners available to assist you are Natalie Wilson and Olivia Serpernat. Uh, we will help you with your training and job search needs. We also have a business services team, Tom Faber and Pete Hall. They help local businesses with employee and workforce training programs. We work closely with Tom and Pete regarding potential work-based learning that includes work experience, on-the-job training, and apprenticeships. To explain, work experience provides a part-time temporary opportunity with an employer. On-the-job training provides an opportunity to learn and earn while you work for an employer. Apprenticeships consist of on-the-job training plus classroom training. Tom and Pete work with our local businesses in addressing their workforce needs in finding talent and employee training. What else do we provide? Well, McHenry County Workforce Network offers free core services that include one-on-one -on -one resume assistance, mock interviews, LinkedIn profile assistance, computer classes, and job search workshops. You can register for any of these through our website. Come and visit our resource room. There you have access to office equipment for job search. That would be computers, the internet, copier, phones, and the fax machine. Also available are current job listings, labor market information, and reference materials. We have staff available to assist you with that. Okay, today we will go over the Trade Adjustment Assistance Program, also referred to as TRADE or TAA. TRADE is a federally funded program that provides benefits to workers who have lost their jobs or are threatened to lose their jobs due to foreign trade. That may be because production is move, being moved out of the country, there are increased foreign imports, and even workers at firms that are suppliers to or downstream producers of trade certified firms may also be eligible for TAA benefits. The United States Department of Labor has determined you are eligible under this program. Benefits can be received in any state in the U.S. regardless of where the layoff occurred. You must be laid off due to no fault of your own and layoff must be due to lack of work. If you quit or were terminated, your trade eligibility may be negatively affected. However, you may qualify for the WIOA program, which is another federally funded grant program designed to help job seekers access employment, education, training, and support services. The program benefits. Uh, the trade program offers a variety of benefits and reemployment services to help unemployed workers prepare for and obtain suitable employment. It is designed to allow eligible trade affected workers to receive retraining and reemployment opportunities. This program is offered in partnership between the Illinois Department of Employment Security and local job centers, such as McHenry County Workforce Network. Here's a list of the trade program benefits that you may be eligible to receive at no cost to you. Employment and case management services, training, reemployment trade adjustment assistance, also referred to as RTAA, trade readjustment allowance, referred to as TRA, job search allowance and relocation allowance. We will go over each benefit individually on the following slides. It's important to note that each benefit has its own deadline. To maximize your benefits, please enroll in a trade program as soon as possible. The benefits rights and obligations or BRO is available in the chat box for you to download. This is a very important document. It provides detailed information on the trade program benefits and services that may be available to you. Also attached is the BRO signature page for you to sign and return to us promptly via email. Included with the trade orientation invitation letter uh, sent to you was the trade fact sheet outlining the trade program benefits and important deadlines. Next slide, please. Okay. To ensure you are uh, referred to appropriate job openings and placed in jobs that utilize your highest skills, you are provided with the following employment and case management services. Comprehensive and specialized assessment of skill levels and service needs, development of an individual employment plan, training available, how to apply for financial aid, short-term pre-vocational services, individual and group career counseling, employment statistics and information related to local, regional, and national labor market areas and supportive services. 
you may be able to be eligible to receive one training plan per trade certification and training is a lifetime benefit. If you do not want to pursue training now, but decide to at a later date, you may do so. However, you would not be eligible for the TRA income support. Allowable types of training include work-based training, which is either on the job, apprenticeships, or customized. Customized training is designed to meet the needs of a specific employer or group of employers. Institutional training, which is career and technical education. Higher education is training that results in a degree or certification. Remedial education uh, may include GED preparation, literacy training, basic math or English uh, as a second language, prerequisite training and advanced degrees. In order to receive the trade readjustment allowance during training, you must be enrolled in training by the end of the 26th week after your most recent separation from trade impacted employment or by the end of the 26th week after the trade petition has been certified, whichever is later. As an example, the Watlow trade petition was certified on September 5th, 2020. 26 weeks from that date was March 6th, 2021. If your layoff date was May 6, 2022, 26 weeks from that date is November 4th. In this scenario, if you wanted training and received TRA cash benefit, you would need to be enrolled in training by November 4th. Any train, training must be approved training, so please do not register for training without prior written approval from us. If you are interested in training, be sure to contact us as soon as possible so we can be sure uh, you do not miss that deadline. There are steps to follow to get into training. If you come to us a few days before the start of the training program, it is likely um, will not be possible to get your training approved on time. You may attend training on a full-time or part-time basis. 100% of training costs are paid. You may be eligible for travel and or subsist subsistence reimbursement if traveling more than 10 miles one way for training. The maximum number of weeks you can attend training is limited to 130. If you are enrolled in on-the-job training, the maximum number of training weeks is 104. In order to receive training paid for under this program, you must meet the following six criteria. There is no suitable employment available to the trade-affected worker. The trade-affected worker would benefit from appropriate training. There is a reasonable expectation of employment following completion of such training. Training is reasonably available to the trade affected worker. The trade affected worker is qualified to undertake and complete such training, and such training is suitable for the trade affected worker and available at a reasonable cost. Uh, your workforce career planner will help you with these at your individual meeting. Okay, trade readjustment allowance. Uh, this generally referred to as TRA is the income support benefit. This benefit provides up to 104 weeks of income support to eligible trade participants while participating in trade approved training. TRA provides the opportunity to continue to receive income support while you are actively engaged in full-time or part-time trade approved training. You must have been entitled to receive UI benefits before you may receive TRA and you must have exhausted your unemployment insurance. You must also have worked 26 weeks out of the previous 52 weeks from layoff and earned at least $30 in each of those weeks. The amount of each weekly TRA benefit or payment is based on the weekly unemployment insurance benefit amount you received. This is the basic outline of the TRA benefit. IDS staff will be presenting more information on this benefit in more detail later. So the Watlow Trade Petition 96076, as I mentioned before, was certified on September 5th with an impact date, uh, September 5th, 2020, with an impact date of uh, July 21st, 2019, and an expiration date of September 5th, 2022. These dates are very important because to be eligible for, uh, eligible to apply for trade benefits, you must have a qualifying separation and a layoff due to no fault of your own between the impact date and the expiration date. To be eligible for the TRA cash benefit, you must be enrolled in training or in certain circumstances waived from training by the later of 26 weeks from the Watlow petition certification date, uh, which uh, was uh, March 6, 2021, or 26 weeks from your individual separation date. Your career planner can help you calculate that date. It is also noted on the fact sheet sent to you. 
Again, these are important dates to remember. If you miss your TRA deadline, you can still receive the other benefits. However, you will no longer be eligible for the TRA income support. Reemployment Trade Adjustment Assistance, generally referred to as RTAA, is another great benefit provided under the trade program. RTAA is an alternative assistance program for older workers certified eligible to apply for trade adjustment assistance. If it is it is designed to allow trade eligible workers who find reemployment to receive a wage subsidy of 50% of the difference to help bridge the salary gap between your old and new employment. You may be eligible for RTAA subsidy for a period of up to two years or total payments of up to $10,000, whichever comes first. The Illinois Department of Employment Security will explain this in more detail later. Job search allowance. This is available to cover necessary expenses incurred while seeking employment. It must be for suitable employment, not available in your area where you are likely to remain employed and earn family sustaining wages. It reimburses up to 90% of costs to attend a job search activity outside of the commuting area, uh, which is 10 miles. These costs may be for an in-person interview, an in-person application, a networking meeting, a job fair attendance, a pre-vocational workshop, and more. You must submit an application for job search allowance. The deadline for filing an application is the later of 365 days from separation date or certification date, whichever is later, or 182 days after completion of trade approved training. Job search allowance, um, an application um, for job search allowance must be submitted before your job search begins. Job search allowances reimburse 90% of the cost of allowable travel and subsistence up to a maximum of $1,250 for a single job search or multiple job searches. Once your job search is completed, your receipts must be submitted to your career planner so the job search expenses can be reconciled and submitted for approval. Please note that if you receive RTAA payments, you are not eligible uh, for this benefit. Relocation allowance benefit is available to reimburse you for approved expenses when you must move to a new area to earn family sustaining wages and employment outside of your normal commuting area because such employment is not available in your commuting area. The relocation allowance reimburses up to 90% of the um, reasonable and necessary expenses involved in moving you, your family and household goods to a new area following your reemployment outside of your normal commuting area. Reimbursement includes the following costs, mileage, rental truck, lodging, temporary storage, moving company, and more. You must submit an application for relocation allowance. The deadline for filing an application is the later of 425 days from separation Oops, did we lose the screen here? Um, all right. Try to get back. Okay, are we back online here? Yes, we are. All right. Um, again, you must submit an application for a relocation allowance. The deadline for filing is the later of 425 days from separation date or certification date, whichever is later, or 182 days after the completion of trade approved training. The relocation allowance benefit requires the completion of an application and prior approval before the relocation occurs. As part of the relocation, you may receive a lump sum equivalent to three times your average weekly wage, not to exceed $1,250. Reimbursement is reduced by any relocation cost paid by another source. Verification of employment and estimates for moving must be submitted. After the relocation is complete, receipts must be provided to your career planner so that the cost can be reconciled and submitted for approval and final reimbursement made. 
Again, please remember and take note of the deadlines that are important to remember when utilizing trade program benefits. These were shared earlier in the presentation. If your layoff happened to be May 6th, then your 26 week deadline is November 4th. If you had a different layoff date, then uh, the uh, deadline would be adjusted accordingly. Okay, this slide serves as an overview of trade program benefits that were just presented. The fact sheet sent to you provides a summary of these benefits. Your next steps is to contact one of the trade program career planners, that would be Lori, Natalie, or Olivia here at McHenry County Workforce. We will be happy to assist you in determining the benefits and services you might be eligible to receive and answer any questions you might have. If you need additional information, please access the resources at the sites listed for the trade program and the company page for Watlow Manufacturing. If you live closer to another workforce center located in a county other than McHenry County, you are welcome to pursue your trade benefits and receive services from them. Let us know and we will be happy to provide you with their contact information. Trade program contacts are listed here. You may want to make note of these. Okay. Uh, that's the end of my presentation. As a friendly reminder, please hold off asking questions until the end of the presentation, or you can enter your questions into the chat box. Thank you very much, and we look forward to working with you. Thank you very much, Lori, um, for sharing employment information, training information, and trade benefits that is not commonly known to the masses. Um, at this time, I would like to transfer the floor to our next presenter, Adam Curran, with the Illinois Department of Employment Security. Morning, everybody. Uh, as Carmine just said, my name is Adam, and I work with the Illinois Department of Employment Security, uh, specifically the trade unit with IDES. Uh, thanks to everyone for being patient today. Uh, I just want to remind uh, everyone to, to keep that seven page, uh, the BRO that you were sent in the chat, in a safe place because it, it outlines our entire program and, and most of what I'll discuss. And if you have questions in the middle of the night, that form probably has the answer on it. Um, I just know that these programs um, and you know my section here at IDES and the career planners, uh, Lori and Natalie, and we're here to help you through this transition in life. We want you to succeed and, and provide some federal money necessary to help you do so. So let's uh, talk about the benefits available through uh, the Trade Act benefits under the TAA program. So welcome. Um, why are we here today? Ultimately, we're here to talk about money. We're here to talk about federal funds that are available because uh, the company you work for had layoffs uh, due to outside of the country influence. Uh, the trade unit where I work is a division of uh, IDES, the Illinois Department of Employment Security. Uh, and if you're in this meeting today, you're eligible for these Trade Act benefits. Um, honestly, I, I believe there's only one person out here. If you have any questions, just, just chime in um, at any point. Um, and then if you have questions after today's meeting, uh, you wanna make sure you go through your career planner at your local LWEO office or by calling uh, the trade unit number, which uh, Lori supplied before, and I'll provide again in just a little bit. Um, I say that because if you go to your unemployment office and you ask questions about trade programs, whether it be TAA, RTAA, or TRA, they probably will not understand how these programs work. So how does this program work? Uh, specifically, how is it funded? Well, uh, the Federal Trade Adjustment Assistance, or TAA program, uh, provides monies to the appropriate partner agencies to help get this money to you as efficiently as possible. And ultimately, the federal money is there for you um, because of uh, what happened with your company due, due to the layoffs that they had due to outside of the country influences. And those two agencies that are going to help you out through this process are your LWOAs, uh, your career planners, your, career, your case managers, and us at the Illinois Department of Employment Security. Um, the LWOAs, they pay for your schooling, your travel, your books, uh, uniforms, tools, and we will provide money to you in the form of TRA and uh, possibly RTAA subsistence payments, money from the federal government to help you keep the lights on uh, and keep a roof over your head. So IDES handles two portions of this program. And the first component we're gonna talk about today is TRA. So TRA stands for Trade Readjustment Allowance. And for the most part, these are a continuation 
of the payments you received from unemployment. Uh, these benefits pay at the same rate, uh, but it's only payable if you're attending school or interested in attending school. And then the other program is RTAA, which stands for the Reemployment Trade Adjustment Assistance. Uh, it basically uh, subsidizes a portion of that uh, difference in an hourly wage, as Lori mentioned. Uh, it's a program for workers ages 50 or better who, who don't want to attend training and become reemployed uh, full time. Uh, and would rather become employed, reemployed full time at a lesser rate than their previous adversely affected employers. So for now, let's talk about how these TRA payments are gonna be structured and how long potentially you'll be able to receive these payments. So whenever you sign up for unemployment insurance or UI, you begin a one year period of time called the benefit year shown here, uh, which starts on the date you sign up. Within that one year of time, there's six months worth of UI money. So if you draw the full payment, your unemployment payments will end at the six month mark. If you draw partial payments, uh, you may be able to draw this money out for a full year, but the total amount of money doesn't change. It, no matter what, it'll still be the 26 weeks or six months worth of UI payments. And then once you exhaust all the UI money, the unemployment insurance money, and if you're attending or enrolled in school or another approved training program, you'll then be switched to a program called basic TRA which is the first segment of TRA. It's basically a different batch of funds paid at the same rate as your unemployment insurance was or UI was. So if you complete a short-term training program within the, the six months of, of basic TRA, you can continue to draw those benefits while you search for unemployment until the, base, until the end of that basic TRA period. So let's say you're enrolled in a, a short course, like a truck driver training course, it usually takes about three to four weeks. Uh, once you complete that course, you can begin your job search while you continue to draw that weekly payment from us, that weekly um, subsistence payment. But if you're continuing your training past the basic TRA period, uh, let's say, for instance, you're enrolled in a longer training program or you get approved to take uh, those last few classes to get your associates uh, or bachelors, you'll then be switched to a program known as additional TRA. So additional TRA allows for payments for 65 weeks out of a 78 week period. And this is only if you're attending school and once you complete your schooling, the TRA payments end. Uh, I mentioned that because it's unlike basic TRA uh, where you might have extra time to look for that job if the short-term training was completed prior to the expiration of that six month uh, basic TRA window. So uh, with additional TRA, uh, once the training is done, your payments are done. Uh, so let's see how this fits into our benefit year timeline. We have our six months of UI, uh, unemployment insurance, and six months of basic TRA. And then going into our second benefit year, we have that additional TRA that I mentioned, uh, 52 weeks of that in your second year potentially, and then 13 more weeks possible in your third benefit year. Uh, but what happens if you have a class that gets delayed or, or canceled and you need training beyond that two and a quarter year window? Uh, our next part of TRA is a completion TRA, which does exactly what the name says. It provides you with up to 13 more weeks of payment to complete the already approved training. And this is only payable within the last 20 weeks of your training, ending on your completion date, uh, the back end. And I'll explain this a little more uh, clearly in a moment. For now, let's go back to that benefit year timeline. So we have our six months of UI, our six months of basic TRA, our additional TRA starting in the second benefit year and then going to the third if necessary. And then that completion TRA would be tacked on right at the end. Uh, but if in the final weeks of your training, um, you know, something happens to your class schedule, it, let's say it's canceled and it's only available on a particular semester, uh, then that approved training might have to be delayed um, through no fault of your own. Uh, which could cause a potential gap in that uh, training. Uh, and you can receive those final 13 weeks of payments so long as you use it in the last 20 weeks of your program, uh, ending on the completion of the program, which would cause that uh, potential gap. But it really doesn't occur that often. Just know that um, more benefit time exists if you're approved for and you need more than two and a quarter years of benefits. TRA payment links. 
Uh, you have the possibility of attending school for an overall period of two and a half years with starting with the six months of UI, uh, basic TRA, six months, 15 months of additional TRA, and then three months of completion TRA. And uh, just to be clear, your career planners, case managers have established approved training lists, but it doesn't mean that you can't get a new or different type of training approved. Um, ultimately, the questions we need to ask uh, when you're looking at new training is, will this schooling or training get you into a Hey, Adam, we can't hear you. To uh, also on the Is that better? Yeah. Okay. Um, where my boss lives in Jacksonville, Illinois, they won't send anyone to welder school because there are already too many welders in that area. And the job market's far too competitive for a newly trained welder. Uh, but if you're willing to locate, relocate to a different area in which welding jobs are in demand, then that training program might be able to be approved. So just keep these things in mind whenever you meet with your case manager. Time limits. Uh, there are time limits to, and requirements to apply for training. Uh, so the most important thing you can do is communicate uh, with your LWOA case managers. I strongly encourage uh, you to write yourself a note uh, or add making an appointment today to your to-do list. I strongly recommend getting this ball rolling, even if you decide not to proceed, uh, but just don't let this opportunity pass you by. Our goal is to get you into a training program that will help you get back into a high demand field that'll uh, get you back to a similar or better standard of living. Uh, but just make sure you start as soon as you can. The process isn't doesn't happen overnight. There's a few, few things your career planners are gonna have to do before they can, uh, help you um, level up in your chosen career field. Uh, that being said, the educational benefits are lifetime benefits. Uh, the, these benefits from your LWO is, will be around if you wanna do this decades down the road. However, uh, the money, the subsistence payments from, from us at IDES are not a lifetime benefit. And the best news is you don't have to pay back those, uh, those benefits as long as you comply with the, comply with the program rules. <laughs> So what are your legal responsibilities? Um, as I mentioned a couple of times before, um, communicate with your case manager regularly. Uh, failure to do so or complete all required training could result in having to pay benefits back. That being said, don't feel as though you're getting into a program with incredibly rigid rules and, and no wiggle room. As long as the state uh, and especially your career planners understand that you're making a good faith effort to do the things you need to do, there shouldn't be any issues, but if you choose to blatantly, repeatedly ignore instructions and work against the system, you could be held liable. Can I work part-time? So yes, it is possible for you to work part-time and continue to draw benefits. Uh, once again, you'll have to communicate with your case manager and get the authorization, and you can only be working part-time. And in just a moment, I'll be discussing the WBA, which is your weekly benefit allowance. It's how much you're determined to receive on UI. And that, that amount is calculated by the state and it does not include dependent allowances. So let's look at an example for uh, part-time work and benefits on unemployment insurance or UI. So let's say your uh, weekly benefit amount, your WBA is $200. So while you're on unemployment insurance or UI, you're able to work part-time and make up to 50% or half of that WBA, basically up to $100 before there's any adjustment to your weekly benefit amount. So for example, your first week on unemployment uh, on UI benefits, you make $99. Um, so IDES makes no adjustment and your WBA remains the same. You keep your part-time earnings of $99 and your WBA of $200. But in your second week, you make $101. And since that's above half of uh, your WBA, your payment will be adjusted by a dollar. So for that week, you'll have your part-time earnings of $101 and your adjusted uh, weekly benefit amount, WBA, of $199. Uh, regardless of how much you earn, you still have to report earnings in the week in which you earn them, not when you receive a paycheck. 
uh, part-time work and benefits on TRA, it's a little different here. So you can make up to 1.5 times your weekly benefit amount before we withhold any money from your weekly payment. And you can earn up to two times your weekly benefit amount before we cancel that week's payment. However, it must be part-time work. So let's see an example of how part-time work functions with uh, TRA benefits. So let's say weekly benefit amount is $200 again. Uh, and while you're on TRA or uh, trade readjustment allowance, you can work part-time and make up to 1.5 times of that WBA. So in this particular scenario, up to $300 before any adjustment to your weekly benefit amount. So for example, your first week on TRA benefits, you make $299 in that part-time job, which is uh, under 1.5 times your WBA. So IDES makes no adjustment and your uh, weekly benefit amount remains the same. Uh, you keep your part-time earnings of $299 and your uh, WBA of $200. But in the second week, you make $301. And since that's above one and a half times your weekly benefit amount, your payment's going to be adjusted by a dollar for that week. So you'll have your part-time earnings of $301 and uh, your adjusted weekly benefit amount of $299. And, and once again, regardless of how much you earn, you still have to report earnings in the week in which you earn them, uh, not when you receive a paycheck. Your benefits under RTAA. So as uh, Lori mentioned earlier, RTAA is a program for workers ages 50 or better who become reemployed at a lesser rate uh, than from their adversely affected employers. And you can do training and RTAA, but from a financial standpoint, a TRA is more beneficial. And once again, contact your case manager if you have any questions. So an example of how this work works, if you earned $20 per hour at your uh, previous employer, and now you make uh, $10 an hour, that's a difference of $10. So RTAA pays half of that difference. So $5 an hour. So $5 an hour for a 40 hour work week is equivalent to $200 for every eligible pay stub. So it must be full-time work to be eligible or full-time school and part-time work. Uh, you cannot start with RTAA and then go to TRA. And it is possible to go to RTAA after doing a short-term training and receiving TRA. Uh, any, weeks, any weeks of paid TRA will be removed from that $10,000 or two-year RTAA limit cap. Uh, they are not two separate programs. So just keep that in mind. So what should you do if you're interested in RTAA? Uh, contact your case manager to fill out an application. Uh, please be sure to keep your pay stubs from your previous adversely affected employer. Uh, the re reason this is, is because we start with the last pay stub and we have to have all of them going backwards until we get to your last full-time sub stub. Um, in some cases, we have to go back quite some time uh, to find that full-time stub. And collecting those pay stubs is a federal re requirement and it can be audited. Some additional points for uh, TRA and RTAA, uh, severance pay. Severance pay does not affect TRA or RTAA. Pension payments may affect the TRA payments only, but not RTAA. It ultimately depends on how the contributions were made, whether they were made by you, your employer, or a combination of both, uh, as to whether it'll affect your, your TRA payment and the same rules would apply for UI or unemployment insurance. Social Security no longer has any effect on UI, TRA, or RTAA. Class attendance. If, uh, if, you, if you fail to attend class for any reason, uh, it will result in a phone hearing and it could affect your payment. Missing one day of class could jeopardize the payment for the whole week. So you must complete and have a student attendance sheet signed by your instructors, and you wanna make sure you retain those forms for audit purposes. So on regular unemployment, you have to conduct a work search and keep a record of that search. Uh, on this program, um, there's no work search required, but we do require that you record your attendance on sheets that regularly get turned into your case manager or career planner. Uh, basically, your work search is being replaced by reporting your attendance. If you don't turn in your attendance, you will not be paid. So just uh, please make sure you keep your case manager informed if there's ever any issues. 
break in training. If the break is less than 30 working days um, in between semesters, you can still get paid. If the break is more than 30 working days, you cannot be paid. So for Christmas break between the fall and spring semester, uh, it's generally under 30 work working days. So if it is, you get paid. Uh, but if you opt not to take classes during the summer break, which is usually at least a couple months, then you would not be paid. Tax documents, uh, whether you're on UI, TRA, RTAA, you're gonna receive the same tax document every year, a 1099G. And it's important you keep your address current in our system, the UI system, to ensure you receive your tax document as the Postal Service uh, is not allowed to forward mail from the state of Illinois. And with regard to RTAA only, uh, due to the nature of the manual upload of payments, taxes are not able to be withheld from those payments. <clears throat> so uh, once a person is designated as Trade Act benefit eligible, a TRA claim was gonna be entered into the system. And from that point on, any questions, uh, whether related to UI or TRA, should be directed towards the trade unit. And again, I'll provide that number in just a moment. HCTC, the health coverage tax credit. Uh, claimants were eligible for uh, HCTC while receiving TAA payments. Uh, unfortunately, this part of the program expired uh, as of the end of last year, but future legislation, legislation may reauthorize it. And this program is administered by the IRS. So if um, the federal government decides to reauthorize this, We'll do everything we can to reach out to you and let you know about it, but at the moment, it's expired. Uh, the simplest way to explain this credit is that if you're paying for your own health insurance, the government gives you a credit or money back on your taxes to offset the out-of-pocket expense that uh, of that health care coverage. But again, it's not active at the moment. Uh, but if you have any questions, I would refer to the, uh, the website provided in that BRO document. RTAA, a person may work full-time or full-time school and part-time work, or a person may work two part-time jobs equal to a full-time job. And TRA election, a person may requalify for unemployment insurance UI at a lower rate. You can elect to continue on TRA instead of UI. So in some cases, if you have a part-time job at the end of your benefit year, uh, the computer checks to see if you qualify for another benefit year. Uh, if it's at a higher rate, great you can take it if not uh, you can choose to stay where you are so um, you know if and when this potential op option occurs just to speak with your career planner case manager or or us at IDES in the trade unit some final points um, very important just to be in contact with your case managers every 28 days they're going to document issues and uh, update them in their their computer system which generates a report for us at the trade unit who updates the system. Um, and then failure to remain in contact with case managers will result in a cease of TRA payment. Um, just please be sure um, that you do whatever you need to do to remind yourself to check in with your career planners at your LWO as regularly. Contacting the trade unit. Um, Unfortunately, uh, IDES is prohibited from communicating with customers via email due to security concerns. But if you have any questions, uh, the number for the trade unit's there, 217-524-7826. It's a group of uh, just a few employees in our special programs division that work with trade all the time. And we're happy to answer your questions and uh, help you navigate these programs. And as always, uh, you can contact your case manager to look into any issues. So that's the end of my presentation. Uh, if anyone has any questions or Carmine, go ahead. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Um, oh, no, I no. I wanted to say thank you um, for sharing that vital trade benefits information. Hopefully it will ease the hardships of being laid off. And I, I second what you said um, of us being here to support you all in a successful transition back into the workforce. We support efforts to gain reemployment as suitable wages that complement your current wages or better through the trade program. Um, I would like to take a moment to display a very important screen that details the contact information of the local workforce center that will be so the source to ensure participants are enrolled in a program by the individual's deadline date. Natalie, if you will, can you please 
um, share your presentation and transition back to slide 22 so the audience can record your contact information as we close out the presentation. Um, as can one of our military- Can you see my screen? Yes, confirmed. Uh, uh, hey, this is Eric with, with IDES. I need to jump in real quick uh, before sure. you take over everything. Um, uh, we One of the things we wanted to bring up, and of course, it's a really good program. Uh, there's a lot of funds being thrown at you. It's helped a lot of people. But we really recommend, and they're going to make sure you have the contact information, which is what they're getting. Get in touch with your career planners, case managers. Get the ball rolling. Uh, especially, it's weird coming into the summer season with school and classes, but from a legal standpoint, everything we do is under federal legislations, and a current batch of legislation is ending, so they're going to be looking at potential new ones uh, as of June 30th, July 1st, but until Congress actually acts on them. We don't have any new information on what the status is. So I'm just really recommending you get in touch with your case managers, get the process rolling, because we're looking at what, if anything, happens after July 1st. And we want to make sure that you get any type of benefits that you're potentially eligible for. So I'm not saying you have to rush right in and make off-the-cuff decisions, but start the process, get educated on it, let your career planners work with you, help make sure you get everything that you're interested in because we do have some legislative uh, uh, road markers coming up that we have to pay attention to. So just really at least get in touch, start the ball rolling, talk about it. That way you're educated. I'd hate for anyone to be caught behind the power curve, but it's a great program. Your case managers, career planners, they've been doing this for years. They're great people. We've worked with them. They are going to help you take advantage of this. Uh, all of this is not locking you into anything. It's just locking the federal government into it for you if you choose to take advantage of it. But I would at least start the ball rolling, talking to them, figure out the details, just to make sure nothing slips through the cracks. But great program. They're going to take great care of you. And uh, as you'll find out, any questions, holler at any of one of us, and we'll do what we can to help you out. Thanks. Thank you, Eric. Um, really appreciate you providing that notification of, of possible changes in the near future. Um, and I definitely want to emphasize on the point that you mentioned that we are here to be supportive in your transition back into the job force. Um, and uh, as one of our military veteran corps partners mentioned before, which is Eric, um, civilians like myself do not have to put our lives at risk to be eligible for these programs and benefits. Um, as they did serve in our country. And we highly encourage you to take advantage of these amazing program benefits. The resourceful information discussed today has also been shared with your HR department. If you don't have tools available to record the information provided, um, this information can be shared again with you guys when you meet with the local workforce area. Um, I've also included a link into the chat that gives you a brief overview of the trade benefits um, and at this time, I would like to open the floor to the employees impacted by the layoff to ask any questions. And our coordinators will greatly appreciate, I mean, address any of those questions as they are the subject matter experts in their respective roles. Um, also, as one of my colleagues like to state um, for this program, he likes to refer to the Cadillac of all programs. And we strongly encourage you to take full advantage of the benefits of this program. Um, I will go ahead and uh, view the chat and I'll start by addressing any questions that are in the chat. Um, I see that we do not have any questions in the chat and any person who is in person at the workshop, if you have any questions, now is the time to ask any questions. I do have one question for somebody that's over the age of 50. Um, if I understood this correctly, is the RTAA not the right way to go? Is it better to use the other program? Uh, Eric, would you like to address that question? Sure, Eric stepped away, but ultimately it's 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 up to you, Miss. I mean, it just depends on whether or not you want to uh, go through training to look for a, a new job, or if you'd uh, rather just uh, take a different job and then we kind of... Uh, uh, help bridge that gap effectively with the RTAA program. Okay. 
Thank you. Sure, no problem. Thank you. Uh, are there any additional questions? So um, if there are no additional questions, I would like to thank our core partners for being here and sharing vital information. And uh, again, thank you all for your time and good luck with your employment endeavors. Enjoy the rest of your day. This will conclude the orientation for Wallow Electric Manufacturing, petition number 96076. Awesome. Thank day. you so much. Thank you very much. Thanks, everybody. Have a good one. You too. Bye-bye.